What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Six Bar Coffee Gym. My name is Adam and today we're talking about latte art. Now specifically in this episode we're going to be talking about the kind of milk and the style of jug and how to produce the best possible outcomes to reduce your wastage and get the best latte art possible. So let's get underway. Now first of all the best choice you can make right at the beginning is what type of jug to use. Now we're not necessarily talking about the style of jug in terms of the sharpness of the spout. That really comes down to what type of latte art you'd like to produce. Some will argue that a sharper spout produces a better rosetta, while a more rounded spout produces a better chula. Now, the semantics of that can come down to the individual barista. I've spent many years pouring latte art with rounded spouts. It was more common to me. So when it came to pouring rosettas, I actually poured a worse rosetta using a sharper spout. So the individual barista does come into play. What we're talking about here is actually the size of jug. Now, individually, each jug is designed to hold a certain amount of milk. That means that you can produce a certain size of coffee. Now in the medium jug here, we're looking to produce either two small or one medium, roughly 12 ounce cup of coffee. On the smaller jug, we're aiming to produce one small cup of coffee. Now the choice here as to which jug to use does come down to how much coffee you're trying to produce. At the end of the day, by producing the same amount of liquid or the correct volume for each jug, we reduce our wastage. That means on the medium jug, filling it to the bottom of the spout line on the small jug, filling it to the bottom of the spout line. If you put any more milk than is designed to go in these jugs, you'll find that once you add steam and heat and the expansion occurs, is that that milk will come up, it'll come out, and it'll go all over your kitchen bench. If you're producing any less milk at the starting point than that and fill below the spout line, the risk you take is that the liquid volume amount in the jug is not enough to fully slow down your steam turn it around and send it back up again, thus creating a vortex and allowing the incorporation of air. If you don't have enough liquid resistance to that steam pressure, that steam will punch through that milk, hit the bottom of the jug, produce a loud guttural squealing sound, and you'll find that everyone in a three block radius knows that you're butchering a latte. So the key is the choice of jug to begin with. Now let's get on to how to steam. Now the key to quality steam is your starting position. If you can picture a 10 cent coin in the center of your milk jug, you're going to be placing your steam wand off to the edge of that coin. What this does is give you the right position for the steam wand to effectively push the steam against the edge of the jug, thus creating a vortex of milk within the center. This means that you'll get a nice spin going, allowing the incorporation of air easily into the jug just by having that off center position. As a result, the spin will then create additional air, foam and volume. The starting position for depth is such that you can still see just where the tip of the steam wand connects to the rest of the body. You should not have to lower it down too much during the course of the entire steaming process. By the time we're done, we can still see only a little bit of milk has been generated on the steam wand here. This means you shouldn't have to do any up or down motions like creating cappuccinos of the 1980s and 90s or additionally should not have to tilt your jug at any ridiculous angles to get the vortex to spin. Now the last consideration any barista has to make is the type of milk. Now obviously with the expansion of various different types of alternative milks in the market these days from oat to soy to rice to maca there are obviously a lot of choices that have to be made. Now, the frustrations in hospitality are that at this point, I believe we're up to about 11 different kinds of alternative milk, and so part of that slows down service. Now, if we're just talking about the actual quality of milk and how we go about steaming and becoming a better milk-based barista, is our choice of full cream and skinny does come into play as to how easy or acceptable the milk will be to your steaming and subsequent latte art. The choice of a barista has to be, where possible, to be using a higher fat or higher sugar based milk. That means, if you can, using the more premium of the milks. Part of that is obviously the frustration that when you are struggling with latte art, that sometimes it is the milk that is doing you the disservice. So where possible, use the best possible milk. 
And that's all we have for you today. I'll say thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe below, we'd love to have you on board as we introduce more videos to this ongoing series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.